Hey, my UOB number is 2010864. For this assignment, I implemented a feedback system for students to give feedback about their lecturers. So now I run the system and show how it is work. This is the server class. So now you can see the server is running and it was connected to the database successfully. This is the onboarding screen of the system. Student can anonymously enter to the questionnaire by clicking this getting start button. Now student can select a lecturer and start providing feedback. Student can't skip questions because this button is validated. Also, the student can view previous questions and change the answers. At the end, before submitting the feedback, system required a verification from the student. After the submission, system will automatically redirect the student to the onboarding screen. Only admins of the system can see feedback analytics. In that case, the system required authentication before view the analytics screen. Admin can navigate to the sign-in screen by clicking this button. If the admin provides wrong details, the system informed about that. When the details are correct, I've been directed to the analytics screen. In this analytics screen, admin can select a lecturer. The default lecturer is Jane Collins. So system generate the analytics for Jane Collins as a bar chart. If admin needs to get analytics for each question separately, admin can click this and get the pie charts. From here, admin can select any question and generate pie chart according to that. After view analytics, admin can send a mail to the selected lecturer with these charts by clicking this button. Demonstration purposes, I am using my Gmail as lecturer's mail address. So let's check my Gmail. Here you can see, I received the mail with the chart. After that, admin can log out from the system. I followed the MVC architectural pattern when implementing this. This is the remote interface which consists of abstract methods. I implemented this in the database function class. This class can define as remote object by extending Unicast remote object class. In constructor method, I configured database connection using JDBC driver. This is the database that system looking for. In this RMS server class, I bind database function remote object using registry as question service. When I run the server, it connected to the database. GUI is in the client application looking for the remote object reference through this questionnaire controller class to send and receive data from the server. Also, to generate chart images, I use QuickChart.io external API. Server can request a chart from QuickChart.io and receive the generated chart image URL through HTTP client. This is how I used interoperability in my system. In the admin sign-in screen, enter the username and password get from these text fields and send to the server to check the correctness. After check this data with database, server will return the status as a boolean into the client. I give access to view analytics only for the admins. 
Also in the analytic view, admin can send mails by attaching chart images to the lecturers. Before send the mail, it's required to authenticate with particular mail provider. As an example, in here I used a Gmail address. If the Google authentication is success only, the mail provider creates a session with the server. This is how I used virtual identity in this system. In the GUIs, I used action listeners to respond the button clicks. Item listeners to listen individual item in drop downs. And mouse listeners to listen mouse clicks. In programming, these listeners categorize as event listeners. Without event listeners, users cannot interact with systems. This is how I used event driven programming in this system. Implementation of remote interface can define as an example for runtime polymorphism because when I implement remote interface in multiple classes, the system can have many forms by overriding these abstract methods. I use single inheritance by extending admin class from lecturer class because admin and lecturer class have set of similar variables. Also, are in my interface extended from remote class. Database function class extended from unicast remote object class and all of these GUIs extended from JFrame class. So these can be defined as examples for inheritance. I used encapsulation for prevent direct access to class variables using access modifiers. Instead of that, I used getters and setters in these classes to access and update values of private variables. Everything in Java is associated with classes and objects. I create multiple objects using these classes to develop more manageable code. It was easy to manage data through these classes by having multiple constructor methods. This is how I used object-oriented concepts in this system. This is the end of this video. You can find the source code from my GitHub repository.